Engineers are intimately familiar with the term architecture, but for the benefit of those who aren't, it is a portmanteau that describes a set of features, services, or design behavior grouped together and given an intriguing name for marketing purposes. And for those who are unfamiliar with the term portmanteau, it describes two or more words elided into a single word so that it no longer has the impact of its constituent words nor the ingenuity of a pun. The emotion engine, the reality synthesizer, and the velocity architecture are prime examples attached to the PS2, the PS3, and the Xbox Series consoles, respectively, and today we're going to have a look at the last. Does Microsoft's architecture represent true innovation in console design, or is it marketing sound and fury signifying nothing? Let's find out. Microsoft describes the Velocity architecture as a way to, quote, unlock new capabilities never before seen in console development, end quote. That is a pretty high-level statement, so I'll offer my alternative interpretation. The purpose of the Velocity architecture is to make sure your title always has the best assets in memory as they're needed, with as little impact to system resource utilization as possible. And, as nearly any low-level system developer will tell you, the delicate dance you perform between memory, CPU, GPU, and I.O. utilization will be your most time-consuming and frustrating task. Microsoft's approach to addressing this in the Series X and S is that they focused on four very logical areas, two hardware and two software. And it's the synergies leveraged between them, in my opinion, that define the Velocity architecture. So without further explanation, let's start with the most fundamental part, and one that everyone understands, the storage mechanism. The velocity architecture, as realized in the Series X and S, depends on a custom-built NVMe solution capable of 2.4 GB per second sustained rate. As with their choice of maintaining locked CPU and GPU clock rates, Microsoft decided to focus on sustained and consistent performance instead of theoretical but inconsistent performance peaks. The Series X includes an internal 1TB drive, of which around 802 gigs is available for user data. While Smart Delivery allows for bespoke content downloads for each Xbox platform, potentially reducing total install size on any one of them, that space can and will be rapidly consumed by the ever-increasing asset fidelity and volume of newer titles. For those who wish to extend their capacity, the series machines have a custom expansion port that can take an external NVMe purported to provide the same throughput. Initial tests seen on Digital Foundry seem to largely uphold this, but in my opinion, it still has a minimal detriment to performance. So this is all well and good, but they wanted to go a step further. To that end, they have introduced the Velocity Architecture's second hardware pillar, a custom-built hardware-accelerated decompression block. This component enables rapid, on-the-fly decompression of industry-standard LZ compressed data, as well as textures compressed by a lossless Microsoft-developed algorithm called BCPAC. As textures typically consume the majority of space belonging to a title, they dedicated years of research into iterating on existing block compression algorithms. And based on industry reporting, what they ended up with is a dark horse differentiator. Cumulatively, Microsoft considers a 2 to 1 compression ratio typical, allowing a steady state 4.8 gigabytes per second read rate. They further suggest that to achieve the same decompression performance in software, a developer would have to allocate four Zen 2 CPU cores. Of course, since this dedicated decompression block offloads the task from the CPU, those system resources can be diverted to other vital time-dependent tasks. So, these two hardware components work together to enable the retrieval of stored data at accelerated speeds, and are utilized by the following two software layers to further optimize not only how, but which resources are loaded. The first software component is the new Direct Storage API. 
This API, building on DirectX, debuts as part of the Velocity architecture, but it's making its way to Windows 10 with the goal that PC gamers, and not just Xbox Series owners with NVMe drives, will be able to enjoy vastly reduced load times and a more immersive gaming experience. I'd actually like to do a full video on the topic in the future, as it's endlessly fascinating, but here is what one should know at a high level. Current file system interaction models are decades old. They work very, very well and are generally simple to understand, but their serialized and verbose operations introduce a barrier to efficient resource loading. Direct storage takes advantage of an NVMe's multiple command and data queues to perform both batched and parallelized command execution and data retrieval much more efficiently than could be done in the traditional model. The API goes further to pipeline red data quickly to the GPU instead of waiting for the application to do it. Again, this is a very high-level explanation, but the topic deserves further delving at a later time. It's included here because it logically enables the final pillar of the Velocity architecture, sampler feedback streaming. And that's the component that probably requires the most explanation. And to make sure that we're all on board, let's first explain what a sampler is. If you saw our earlier video where we talked about rasterization, you'll remember that often when filling out an NGON, pinned texture coordinates describe how a texture is to be applied. The feature that samples the texture and provides the appropriate texture pixel, or texel, to the rasterizer is called the sampler. The other thing to understand is the concept of MIP maps. MIP maps are a hierarchy containing the same texture at different resolutions, and why you need them is really beyond the scope of this video and again a topic for another time, but the sampler we talked about typically has to deal with all the MIP maps of a texture and not just a simple texture. And for the MIP maps to be usable, they have to be there in memory. Now here's a fascinating bit. This is from Microsoft. Through specialized hardware added to the Xbox One X, we were able to analyze texture memory usage by the GPU, and we discovered that the GPU often accesses less than one-third of the texture data required to be loaded into memory. Just think about that. Two-thirds of all texture data of your game is just never being used, but it's loaded into memory. Traditionally, the samplers were pretty opaque in their operation. You tell it some general rules about MIP map and texel selection, and you just kind of trust it to do its job. If only there were some way to get feedback from the sampler, telling you not only which MIP map levels are being accessed, but which parts of each MIP map level are being utilized. If only you could get some sampler feedback. With that feedback data in your greedy little hands, you could be judicious about which bits of which MIP map levels should be loaded and when they're being utilized. Does judicious use of this knowledge provide a noticeable advantage when streaming in assets? Again, according to Microsoft, this innovation results in approximately 2.5 times the effective I.O. throughput and memory usage above and beyond the raw hardware capabilities on average. SFS provides an effective multiplier on available system memory and I.O. bandwidth, resulting in significantly more memory and I.O. So where does that leave us? With a high-speed storage mechanism capable of real-time decompression of code and data, loaded only when it is absolutely needed using a parallelized command and data queue mechanism built right into the NVMe drives that can be pipelined right into the GPU. That, by way of high-level explanation, is the Velocity architecture, a system that really does make some significant strides in performance and possibilities. Combine this with other features such as variable rate shading, hopefully there'll be a link to that above, and the compound effect can be pretty exciting. So this has been a high-level overview of the Xbox Series' Velocity architecture. What do you think about the innovations it introduces? Do you see it as a literal game changer? Please leave a comment below and let us know. Also feel free to add any questions or suggestions you might have. And if you've enjoyed this video and would be interested in seeing more, please consider liking it, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. 
it would be greatly appreciated and really helps out a lot. Thanks for watching.